Let's speak to Chris Elders, a structural geologist at Curtin University in Australia. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Is there some sort of confusion here? I mean, just tell us what you make of this prediction of a mega earthquake, because I didn't think it was possible to forecast when a quake is going to hit. That's right. It's very difficult to tell exactly when an earthquake will, will occur. And the prediction has been, or the expectation rather, has been uh, up until events of earlier this week that there would likely be an earthquake of magnitude eight or greater at some time in the next 30 years. And I think really what, what the scientists are saying from Japan is that the likelihood of that occurring is now, is now greater. So yes, we still can't say exactly when it will occur, but we can say that it's highly likely that there will be one in the relatively near future. Although in, when we're speaking in geological terms, 30 years is, is, is relatively near. Are you experts also confused about what could be a foreshock or what could be an aftershock? Because these two events in three days, fairly, well, of magnitudes of significance, but not causing any damage, really. Yes, that's correct. So what happens with earthquakes is that <clears throat> you might get quite a large earthquake occur at one place in a fault zone. And when that happens, it re reduces or removes the stress and the strain at that one particular place. But the problem is it then, a little bit further along the same fault, it then increases the, the stress because the, uh, the bit of the fault that hasn't moved, it has to absorb that stress in some way. So it then makes it more likely that an earthquake will occur somewhere nearby. But again, as we say, more like, it, it's more likely that it will occur, but when that will occur on the order of days or weeks or years or decades is much, much more difficult to say. Can you explain this phrase, a mega thrust earthquake, to us? Because that's what they're talking about in Japan, that this mega quake would be a mega thrust one. That's right. So what they mean by that is, is an earthquake of magnitude 8 or greater. So the earthquake that occurred uh, this week was magnitude 7. A magnitude 8 earthquake uh, would be 10 times bigger than that. And the... Um, risk is that the earthquake could be as large as magnitude nine, so 100 times more uh, powerful than the earthquake that occurred this week. And this type of earthquake is, is uh, normally occurs in places such as the, the Nankai Trough, the um, area off Japan that's being uh, investigated and studied at the moment. And they're places where uh, the tectonic plates that are made of ocean crust are moving down or being subducted beneath the uh, the continents. So it's very similar to the um, process that caused the uh, Sumatra earthquake back in 2004. Again, that was um, a magnitude nine earthquake with devastating consequences and large tsunamis, as we know. Um, the magnitude nine earthquake in 2011, uh, in Japan that uh, caused all the damage to the nuclear power stations as well as the massive tsunami that killed so many people and other earthquakes that occur uh, off uh, Chile and other parts of South America. So these mega earthquakes do occur uh, every now and again in these particular places where the ocean oceanic uh, crust or tectonic plates made of ocean crust are moving down underneath, uh, underneath the continents. What sort of modelling have you seen that uh, shows what the effect of a mega earthquake would be on Japan? Well, there's different sorts of modelling that can be uh, can be done, and there's some, actually some fascinating work that the Japanese have done in trying to drill right down to the fault zone so they can measure the um, the strain and the stress uh, the stresses in in that um, in that area, but then. We can, uh, if we know the size of the earthquake that occurs, we can uh, estimate how much the seafloor might be lifted up by that um, uh, earthquake activity. And then that can then be translated into the size of our tsunami wave that might occur. So there's predictions that if the, uh, if the mega earthquake was as much as a magnitude nine, uh, the tsunami wave could be as high as 30 meters. And clearly that would be uh, devastating as well, of course, as all the shaking that would uh, damage buildings uh, in what's a relatively um, highly densely populated part of, uh, part of Japan. Chris Elders, thank you so much indeed for sharing your expertise about this. 
Thank you.